guys, welcome back. My name is Nathan and today I'm going to be recapping all of the action at this year's NHL trade deadline. Now the 2020 NHL trade deadline was pretty wacky. We didn't see a ton of star players being traded, but we saw a lot of trades in a pretty short amount of time. So what were the big players in this year's trade deadline and where did they all get moved to? Watch till the end for all the recaps of all these trades and my opinions. And of course, if you're new, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Now for our first situation to recap in today's video, we first need to talk about the main trade piece that ended up resigning with his team, that being Chris Kreider of the New York Rangers. He signed a $6.5 million deal for seven years, taking him until his mid-30s. And he was a guy that was number one in a lot of trade bait boards, a guy that pretty much everybody saw as going to be traded, but until today, we really didn't get too much confirmation on that end. We all just assumed a trade was going to happen, but then New York Rangers and Chris Kreider inked a deal and he'll be a New York Ranger for a very long time. Now going on to a player who was heavily rumored that actually got traded, we can now go to Jean-Gabriel Pajot of the Ottawa Senators. Now the Sens gave us some entertainment today with a couple of big ones. We got the Vladislav Nemestikov trade and the Jean-Gabriel Pajot trade and in this one even though I did make a dedicated video about it, we might as well mention it here of course. Now the Islanders in this trade, ended up getting a 2020 first round pick, a 2020 second round pick, and a 2022 third rounder. Now, the first round pick will become a 2021 pick if the Islanders somehow picked in the top three, but that's not going to happen. And the third round pick would become the third rounder for Ottawa if the Islanders win the Stanley Cup. So if they don't win the Stanley Cup, then it's just a first rounder and a second rounder for the Ottawa Senators. This is a trade that I think the Ottawa Senators did pretty well in. Even though Pajot was the best center on the market, I definitely do like the return that they got in this. Getting a first round pick and a second rounder is not bad. Now going on to one of the bigger deals in this entire trade deadline involving the New York Rangers and the Carolina Hurricanes. This is a trade that is fascinating, including Brady Shea and a first round pick. Now Brady Shea was one of the most rumored players throughout this whole trade deadline, but I personally didn't even see a trade happening. Until earlier today, there was a lot of rumors that the Canes were going after him, and then like an hour later, everybody said it wasn't going to happen, and then it officially happened just minutes before the trade deadline deadline ended. Bob McKenzie with it also saying that Brady Shea going to the Carolina Hurricanes for a first round pick. Now we don't know exactly which first round pick this is because Carolina has the Toronto one and their pick as well, but I would guess that it is Toronto's pick because they probably have a better chance of making the playoffs than even the Canes at this point who did load up. We'll get to that in a second too. But Brady Shea is a guy on top of the trades that they already made, is a guy who can be a good player but at the same time for New York has not been all that great in the past couple of years. I think he's a guy that's kind of in need of a change of scenery and in Carolina, he'll totally get that. But getting a first round pick for Brady Shea is an absolute haul for the New York Rangers any time of the week. Now the Canes were not done whatsoever in not just trading for players, but trading for defensemen. They also got Sammy Vanden from the New Jersey Devils at this trade deadline and didn't have to give up too much. Now the deal for Carolina is they end up giving Sammy Vanden, of course, who likely will be a rental for them in exchange for Clayson, Yanni Kekkonen, and a conditional fourth that can move up to a third round pick depending on how many games Vatten plays. Now the Canes weren't even done there. They already got Sammy Vatten, Brady Shea, and they also go out and get Vincent Trocek from the Florida Panthers. Now Trocek is one of those guys that heading into this deadline had a lot of rumors swirling around him. Not having the greatest year, but is still a top six center. And for the Canes, will provide a lot of value. Now, Trocek goes to the Carolina Hurricanes, and in exchange, the Canes go to the Florida Panthers and give up Eric Halla, Lucas Walmart, Ido Leo Sturinen, and Chase Prisky. Now, Prisky and Leo Sturinen are prospects, but Lucas Walmart and Eric Halla are both very solid NHL players that will also help the Florida Panthers. But in the end, the Canes do get the better player, and the Florida Panthers get more depth. I think at this point, it's a trade that can help both teams. And for Florida, guys like Eric Halla and Lucas Walmark will be very solid for them. 
Now going on to the big goaltending trade at this year's deadline. Now going to the Vegas Golden Knights and the Chicago Blackhawks trade involving Robin Leonard. Now Robin Leonard was maybe the best goaltender on the market and a guy that was kind of on the tipsy-turvy. He could get traded, he could stay. We didn't really know. But heading into the deadline with just like 10 minutes to go, Robin Leonard was officially confirmed to be traded to the Vegas Golden Knights. Now it took a lot of while to get the actual info on this trade, but for the Vegas Golden Knights, they do get Robin Leonard in exchange for Malcolm Subban, a second round pick, and prospect Slava Demin. And as a person who really likes the Vegas Golden Knights, I really like this deal for the Vegas Golden Knights. For the Chicago Blackhawks, it's fine. I mean, a second round pick, and who knows what Malcolm Subban becomes. But in the end, for Vegas, you got a guy who can be a bona fide starter and in the worst case scenario, will be a great backup. In the case that Flurry maybe doesn't play great in the second half or doesn't play great in the playoffs, you have a guy like Robin Leonard who played great for the Islanders in last year's run when he was healthy and was just great for them too. And so far this season with a pretty bad Chicago defense, he's also been doing pretty good. So I think for Vegas, they didn't get a guy like Sammy Vanden, they didn't get some of the defense that they wanted, but you get Alec Martinez and now Robin Leonard, two guys who I think will have big impact on that team. Now, we also had a pretty solid trade involving the Oilers and the Detroit Red Wings involving Andreas Afanasiu and quite a few draft picks. Now, this was pretty much in the middle of the trade deadline, but still very much worth noting. For the Oilers and the Red Wings, they get a deal done. For the Detroit Red Wings, they receive Sam Gagne, a 2020 second and a 2021 second, and the Oilers are able to get Andreas Afanasiu and Ryan Koffner, who is a left wing prospect for the team. Now the Oilers also after this ended up getting Tyler Ennis from the Ottawa Senators for a 2021 fifth round pick, but the Oilers were pretty active in making some depth moves here, and Andreas Jonathan C will be great for them on top of Tyler Ennis who's having a great year too. Although I think they overpaid for Avin to giving up two second round picks is a lot more than I expected, they underpaid for Tyler Ennis only having to give up a fifth round pick, so I think it kind of evens it out. But for the Oilers, they got some more depth, some more forward help, which is exactly what they needed. Now, even though we saw a bunch of very solid and big trades, there were a lot of smaller ones that are totally worth noting as well. One of those being between the Sabres and the Pittsburgh Penguins involving the likes of Dominic Cahoon and Connor Sheary. Now, for the Buffalo Sabres, they end up sending Connor Sheary and Evan Rodriguez to the Pittsburgh Penguins in exchange for Dominic Cahoon. Now, I personally am a really big fan of this trade for the Buffalo Sabres. Cahoon has had a pretty solid year in Pittsburgh when healthy, and again, when he is healthy, I think can be potentially a top six forward because he is that young and that skilled. But for the Pittsburgh Penguins, you also get Connor Sheary, the reunion in Pittsburgh, and Evan Rodriguez, who I think can be a solid bottom six guy for them. I don't think it's an out absolute steal for the Buffalo Sabres, but I would put them on the edge here. Getting a guy like Dominic Cahoon for not the greatest amount of assets is a pretty big W for Buffalo. Now we also saw some good trades involving one for ones, and one of the ones that was, for players at least, was involving the Bruins and the Anaheim Ducks. Now the official one for one is Danson Hunter from the Bruins goes to the Anaheim Ducks in exchange for Nick Ritchie. And I am personally am a pretty big fan of this trade for the Anaheim Ducks. I think they got kind of fleeced in the Andre Kasha deal, and I think the Boston Bruins love to have Andre Kasha. But now in this deal, I think the Anaheim Ducks got the better of the players. Danton Heinen is a superb defensive forward, and offensively, while he could use some work, is still a good point producer for sure. Nick Ritchie is one of those players that has a lot of talent, but just has not put it all together, and he's a guy that maybe on Boston rekindles that, but to me, Danton Heinen is a more proven player, I'm pretty sure is also younger, and I think for the Boston Bruins, although he is kind of a great fit, I think Nick Ritchie is, I don't think he is the better player, but in this trade, the Anaheim Ducks, I think, get a good center here in Danton Heinen, who will help them for the years to come. Now, one of the more confusing trades we saw this trade deadline involved the Tampa Bay Lightning and the San Jose Sharks. Now, a disclaimer here, because we don't know all the details of this trade, but we do know most of it. Right now, between Tampa and the San Jose Sharks, we know Barclay Goodrow is going to the Tampa Bay Lightning, and we know a first-round pick is going back to the San Jose Sharks. And we don't know if that's conditional or if it's a different pick or something, not in 2020. But from what we know at that point, that is the trade. If it is just that, then... 
Tampa kind of got a little bit fleeced there, but there is some reasons for that. Goudreau is fantastic defensively. On a bad defense team in San Jose, he's been a lone bright spot. And when it comes to just pervasiveness and just being amazing on the penalty kill too, he's a guy that is great in that area. And also has one more year left in his deal, under $1 million, so a great value contract there, which also is what Tampa is training for. But that is pretty much it for the big trades at this year's trade deadline. If I miss anybody let me know down in the comments down below i'll let you know my thoughts on it as well but with this video i need to hear y'all's thoughts down in those comments down below let me know what you think about this year's trade deadline was it exciting was it boring let me know and also what you think about the trades here today all the big names going and the winners of this year's trade deadline also share this video with your friends get the word out there and click this card right here to watch all of my trade videos right in one playlist of course hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and ring that bell if you haven't already. My name is Nathan, and I'll see you on the next video or stream. Goodbye.